Hi guys, welcome back to Herky the Cavalier's channel. I'm here today with Herky, Milton, and Shannon. Hi! So I think you saw her in our last video, and if you didn't, I'll be linking it right up here. But basically, we were having Milton's birthday right here at her store. It's Pet Wants OC South. So thanks for having us again. Thank you for having me again. So I'm excited today because Shannon's store, as you know, offers a lot of foods that I'm very passionate about. You've seen a lot of these brands that I mentioned on my channel, namely the Small Batch Raw Food, and we like Stella and Chewies. A lot of these brands we've used before with Herky and Milton. So. Um, I think it's a great decision that you decided to open not only a pet store but focus on more natural foods. Can you tell me like why you decided to not go for... Uh, my goal is to have products that have nutritional value, that are nutritionally dense, that are healthy, have natural ingredients, mm -hmm. whole foods. Raw is great. We've got uh, freeze-dried, we've got dry food. It comes down to quality and, and nutrition. Because there's a lot of different options too. Like there's not only raw as like a healthy option. Right. I think you mentioned to me there's canned food also that can be very good for your pet. Then there's kibble, there's dehydrated right. raw, and then there's the traditional kibble. But all these are healthier than foods that we call commercially available. Right. That? Yes. Yeah. A lot of the brands that I carry are small batch brands. Mm -hmm. They're independent brands. Mm -hmm. Uh, they promote independent pet shops like mm -hmm. me. They're not carried at the big box stores. Mm -hmm. um, they're not commercially made. Mm -hmm. They're definitely more handcrafted, smaller companies. Um, not necessarily super expensive either. Just really yes, great quality. It's true. That's a misconception mm -hmm. also that uh, healthier foods are going to be more expensive. I think um, certain brands of food even, like the vet recommended diet, sometimes right. can be very expensive. Definitely. Right. Very expensive. Yeah. Yep. And can you tell me and tell us what's the main difference between commercially available food and like the smaller batch foods? Yes. Um, definitely it comes down to quality mm -hmm. um, and quality control too. Okay. Um, there's brands that I carry, such as Small Batch mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. There's six people at that entire company. Really? Yes. Oh my and god, I, I did not know that. Yes. Okay, I know the owner of the company okay. um, literally watches the shipments come in of the produce okay. and goes through it himself and oh says, God. this isn't good enough, you know, this is this is good enough. So oh. when you think about a small company and mm -hmm. the care that they're putting into their mm -hmm. their food, yes, um, they're not spending the money on marketing, they're not spending the money on packaging mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. false advertising and things like that. They're really just putting the money towards quality food. That's and amazing. that's what I'm focusing on finding for the store. Oh, that's amazing. I really didn't, didn't know, and I don't even know how I stumbled upon Small Batch. I think it's another Cav owner okay. living in LA, and I asked her, what do you feed your dog yeah. as raw? Because we were coming here for a while. So she said, go with Small Batch. So that's just how I went with Small Batch, and the girls just love it. Good. What I love is the fact that when you get those patties and they thaw, they actually stay pink or red. You know, ah. so you know it's actually raw food because we bought some brands at home yeah. for raw. So that's that's just to give you a comparison that even when you eat raw food, mm -hmm. some brands can be better than others. For sure. So the one we were using at home, by the time you thaw it in the fridge, it becomes brown. Ooh. Like it looks like, you know right. when you have um, ground meat? Yes. That it's a bit brown? Yes. That's what it looked like. So just make sure that you you're aware of the fact that certain types of food are better than others right, right? exactly Perfect. and you think what would you want to eat do you want yes. to eat brown meat I don't I, I so don't why either would your dog want to eat brown no, meat? <laughs> exactly it just looks a bit fishy when it's brown right exactly yeah so uh, I don't know if I ever told this story on the channel but um Herc and Milton they weren't always on raw and they just switched up um, last fall like okay. about October Oh, it's almost been a year. Actually. Oh my god, oh it goes by so fast. Um, <laughs> so the reason why we changed is just because I, I was always on the quest of getting like better and better food mm -hmm. and getting more and more educated. And being on raw was always on the back of my mind. But I always had that misconception that it was going to be more expensive and this and right, that. Right. But the food that they were on came up to more expensive than the raw that I ended up purchasing. Wow. Which is amazing. But the real reason that made me switch over is because Herky last end of summer, I would say she had a little issue with that. Like she was just urinating a bit more than usual. So I was like, maybe she has a urinary tract infection or something. So we took her to the vet and they did some testing and turns out no infection, but they found slightly elevated levels of um, minerals in her urine. So then the vet said, 
this could eventually turn into like um, those kidney stones and those could be very painful. So she suggested we switch her diet. And the food that she suggested that we switch on was a royal canine urinary diet, which is high sodium. And I was like, oh. why, would, why would she be on this kind of diet? And the vet says, well, basically this will dilute her urine because the food is high in salt. Therefore, your dog will drink more water. Oh no. <laughs> Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? Yes, like, actually it, it is. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like if you even think about, would you do that to yourself? Like just eat more salt in order to drink more water. Oh no. No. So what we decided to do is that uh, we just put, we gave her cranberries and blueberries added to her food and then we switch her to raw altogether because it's such a high moisture food. Awesome. Yeah. Don't be steadfast mm -hmm. on one or the other. Yes. You know, there's great products. Mm -hmm. Um, that are wet, that are dry, that are raw. Mm -hmm. It comes down to quality and what works well for your dog. Exactly. You know, so if, mm -hmm. if raw isn't working and your dog is having tummy troubles mm -hmm. and um, you could tell by the poo if it's oh, not working absolutely. out, yes. then, then change it and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, do what's best for your pet. That's what I absolutely. say. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because the poo is one of the major things that I noticed when they switched to raw. Yeah. They, they got so much smaller and like compact. And that just was such a big indicator to me. I'm like, yes. that means they retain all the, like, like the, the nutrients. nutrients. Yes, yeah. exactly. Nothing runny and everything was like consistent awesome. and everything was like awesome. super healthy. So I'm very happy with that. Good. So um, I'd like to get back on the on the topic of like commercial food versus more natural food. Okay. Um, so is there a difference in how the food is made? Like ingredients aside, is there like a method or a processing way that makes them different? Well, for sure, um, I can speak for, we have our own brand of dry food, of dry kibble, mm -hmm. um, that is the Pet Wants branded food, and it is very different from commercial kibble that you would buy at the grocery store, at the big box store. Mm -hmm. Not just looking at nutrition, you know, yeah. the, um, the ingredients, ingredients themselves. Right. Yeah. It's actually a huge difference in how it's prepared. Mm -hmm. Our food is cooked at very low temperatures, for okay. one. Mm -hmm. So commercial kibble could be cooked about 500 degrees. Our food is cooked around 200 to 20. Oh. So just in the way that the nutrients are being treated, yes. there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, you're not burning and frying all of the value out of those ingredients, for one. Yeah. Um, for two, our food is cooked in really small batches. Mm -hmm. um, you imagine like a huge uh, commercial factory and they're just you know dumping ingredients and no one's really paying attention or caring mm -hmm. when you're in a small batch environment they're really looking like we talked about you're mm -hmm. they're looking at the foods and making sure you know Absolutely. everything's taken care of our food is fresh too it's fresher. what does that mean when it's fresh? well it's fresher than commercial kibble uh -huh. our you know commercial kibble is made in a big factory mm -hmm. it's put on a semi truck put in a warehouse mm -hmm. stored put on a on a shelf somewhere yeah. and you really don't know how old it is okay your bag of dog food that you buy from you know the grocery store mm -hmm. it could be six months old it could be 18 months old by the oh. time you're bringing it home and putting it into your dog's bowl mm -hmm. our food is guaranteed fresh meaning i order it mm -hmm. it's shipped directly to me there's mm -hmm. no distribution so it's less than 30 days old by the time okay. it comes to me oh, and could good. be in your pet foods bowl and we get it every single month Oh, so we okay. say get what you need mm -hmm. so that you always have the freshest food available. So you, when your clients come in and they buy this kind of food, they yeah. buy smaller quantities because exactly. they can replenish their supply quicker. Monthly. Right? So okay. you always have the freshest because nutrition depletes month after yes, month after month. Course. So when you buy those big bags of like 20 kilos of food, yes. then but as the time goes, like I remember when Hurricane Milton were on kibble before, mm -hmm. you just smell that it's like a bit more stale like it just gets more and more stale like as as the bag depletes it does the nutrition actually depletes and usually people like it, it just makes sense for you logically to buy the bigger bag of food because you're like i save money right but when right. you really think about it would you buy something in like that big of a quantity and you eat it over like months no no you want the fresh food exactly. yeah it's gross so if i want to eat the fresh food they should eat the fresh food too i think most of you on our channel like you really want everything that's best for your dog and we're not saying that there's one specific food that's the best for your dog but just be mindful of which brand of food that you're feeding them right uh how fresh it is the quality of the ingredients and everything because 
you know, they're not there for the longest time, which is super sad. So right. I, I would personally want my dogs to have the best quality life possible while they're here. And if that can prolong their life by even like a year, right? you know, that's oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I agree 100%. And if they're healthier now, you might avoid like health issues later. True. And yeah. like medication and all that kind of stuff. Because we see a lot of older dogs too. Like they, they come in and the, their body shape is just like very boxy and very big, you know? Right. Like it, it kind of shows that they've been eating corn all their life. Right. It's really right. gross. And on top of that, I think you told me too that a lot of these dogs are on tons of medication. They are. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I hear it a lot. Right. And when you think about the cost for buying a nice quality food mm -hmm. and the health and preserving your pet's life yes. and well-being, mm -hmm. And then think about, okay, I'm going to go buy the cheapest food available. Mm -hmm. Think about the vet bills and think about the health issues that you're yes. going to come up with, mm -hmm. you know? So it really is an investment to feed them healthy. It is. So it that is. they're healthy and well. It's the same yes. with, with us, I'm yes. sure. Like, you want to invest in your health. You want to invest in their health because they're a little big. Yes. All right, so I just wanted to backtrack a bit and like tell people how we decided to do this video together. Okay. Basically last week, uh, there was a family that came here with their Cavalier and they basically told us that our last raw video that we did saved their dog's life. And that was the sweetest um, thing ever because their dog was on medication and he was just sick in general. And when they switched him to raw, he was super healthy. So what we thought was really interesting is that if we can save another dog's life by absolutely. doing this video, then we're all for it. Yep. <laughs> Just one dog. It's yeah. all worth it. <laughs> exactly. Of course it's totally worth it. Worth oh, it. Yes. yes. Um, so now uh, we have all this food out because we wanted to talk about uh, the differences in each food and what may be more suitable for you, more suitable for your budget uh, and for your lifestyle. Right. So we have high quality kibble, which is not uh, commercially available, and it's not as highly processed as the commercially available food. Milton seems to love it. <laughs> How cute! <laughs> and this is ingredients that are sourced like more locally, yeah. right? Like it's made in the USA. And made everything. in the USA, yeah. And it's the brand Pet Wants. Yes. Then we also have, oh, I know this brand. It's I know great. This brand. Yeah. It's really good wet food. Nature's Logic uh, wet food. It's basically a canned dog food. This, then you would have freeze dried raw. Mm -hmm. So this is similar to what Herc and Milton were on before they switched to raw. Uh, so we're going to talk about all those differences. Right. And then this one is new from Small Bash. This is the brand that we eat when we're out here. This is lightly cooked frozen lightly cooked so this is really interesting i'll let shannon talk about it a bit yeah. more and then of course you have the traditional raw this is what herky and milton eat when they're out here <laughs> we just love this so much you just need to um be a bit more prepared when you eat raw because yes. you need to thaw it overnight and stuff <laughs> like that i, I want to start with the lightly cooked because i think that's super interesting and uh, very it, interesting it's like brand new so I'd like you to talk about that. Definitely would love to. So there's definitely a trend of people home cooking or freshly preparing um, human grade dishes for their pets. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's different than raw because it's definitely heated. Mm -hmm. um, and I could definitely see the nutritional benefits of that. Mm -hmm. I could see that it's easy on digestion. Mm -hmm. So this brand came out with a lightly cooked mm -hmm. um, alternative to raw. Mm -hmm. What's really neat about it is it is cooked at very low temperatures. It's actually sous vide. Mm -hmm. um, so it's cooked, I think, under 200 degrees or 150 degrees for oh. only five minutes. Oh, okay. So it's very lightly processed. Mm -hmm. So they are you know, maintaining the nutrients and all of that in the food, but it is pasteurized. So, okay, so this would basically be for people that aren't totally into like the raw thing, but they're more into like the home cooked style. I would say so. Okay. Or a transition to raw. Oh, if okay. your dog is on, you know, mm -hmm. a dry kibble mm -hmm. and you are transitioning to raw, that's a very dramatic yes. shift. Mm -hmm. This would be something nice in the middle. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And some dogs, you know, like, like we talked about mm -hmm. before, you do what's good for your dog. Mm -hmm. Some dogs... Raw is harder on their digestion. You know, people are concerned about bacteria and things yes. like that mm -hmm. in the raw. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a nice middle ground. Okay. I would um, have to ask two questions for the guys. Yeah. What is sous vide and what is pasteurized? So sous vide, I feel like it's a very, um, like a, it's bougie. You know, it's like a way of cooking food that you basically put it, like you, you vacuum seal it. Right. right. So that uh, it absorbs all like... You, usually it's to absorb all the seasoning? Yeah, everything gets kind of vacuum sealed yeah. into a bag. Mm -hmm. So all the meat and all mm -hmm. the vegetables and everything are 
together mm -hmm. and then it, I think it's put into hot water. Oh, okay. And then it's just kind of packed in there so that so, all the flavor and all the nutrients and stuff are in there. Good. And solid. <laughs> and what does this look like? Does it look like um it looks like, like a patty. Okay. Okay. It looks very similar to the raw, mm -hmm. but it looks cooked. It looks cooked, uh -huh. and it definitely doesn't have like blood or anything like that. Oh, okay. where sometimes with the raw, yes. you'll yeah, see you blood, uh -huh. which I think is probably delicious. You know, to the oh, dogs. they love it yes. so much. Yeah, yeah. So it's very different in mm -hmm. that way. I like that it has a lot of moisture still in there. Mm -hmm. Because moisture is huge for health, for yes. overall health. Like oh, we absolutely. were talking about too. Mm -hmm. Drinking water is great, but if dogs could actually eat their water too, and, and cats better. as well, it's because even you, better. You can't force dogs and cats to drink water. Right. So it's so not if like eating. a human. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. So it's better. So what is pasteurization? <laughs> okay, so it's it's a partial sterilization of the product. Mm -hmm. So it eliminates any bacteria in the product. Um, so it basically says here also, making it easier for delicate tummy. So if you're afraid that like the raw food is going to like make your dog sick or anything, then this could be a good yeah. alternative. Yeah. It but sounds I like a great alternative. What? It sounds like a great <laughs> it's alternative. No, it's, it's super good. We've actually had Talk a about sample how they live. Yeah. of this. Uh, when we were, last time we were here, yeah. we were just like transitioning over from like LA to the OC and we, we grabbed some samples of this at a pet store yeah. and they loved it. They loved My it dog so much. loves it too, to be oh, honest. Oh, there you go. My dog loves this. Mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. she does. So again, we come back to give your dogs what they like so mm -hmm. long as it's high quality mm -hmm. and so long as they're doing well with it. Mm -hmm. Look at their poo. Make yes. sure they're healthy. Make sure they're they're digesting it. What did, your, what did your vet friend say about the poo? Oh, the poo. Okay, <laughs> the key with the poo. You want to make sure if you got poop in the backyard that you can put your foot down and kick it and it'll fly. You don't want your shoe to get stuck into the poo. Red flag. Oh, red yeah. flag. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's a really good indication of poo. And I have a really funny story about that, too. Um, I, I'm a strong believer, too, that you, you have to look at the poo to make yeah. sure that the digesting everything really well. You don't want anything runny. Everything has to be compact and small. And when we switch to raw, that's what we notice. Their poops are so small and so hard and compact. And last week we were on a walk and there was no there was no garbage can. So Andy picked up the poo, like the good dog dad that he is. <laughs> and since there was no garbage, he just put the bag of poo in his backpack yeah. on the side pocket. And he's like, I'll just throw it out whenever I find a garbage. And we just forgot, you guys. And it's only until the next day that I realized that the bag of poo was still in his backpack. And we're like, oh my God, that was in our bedroom overnight and we did not smell anything. That's a really that's good huge. indication, right? Yes, It that's doesn't huge. smell like, I'm pretty sure baby diapers smell like worse. They do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really good. That means they absorb everything. There's yep. nothing like toxic in their poo. It's just- They're absorbing the nutrients yeah. and just dispelling the waste. Exactly. Yes. It's great, perfect. Um, okay, so on to the next bag of food. Okay, so let's so freeze dry or just raw. Yeah, let's okay. talk about just this raw. I feel like because I, we've been on this, mm -hmm. like I, this is exactly the kind of food that we're on at home mm -hmm. too. So it's the frozen patties of raw, and they contain organ meat. Yeah, they contain bones, and they contain muscle meat, and they have vegetables and fruits too. So they it's do. a very balanced thing. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very balanced. Yeah. And there's no synthetic vitamins and minerals. Yeah, Literally no. all of the nutrients come from the fruits, vegetables, meats, mm -hmm. organ meats, uh, bone even. Yep. And I love that the list of ingredients, you understand everything in that list of ingredients. Yeah, it sounds and good. I, I always tell people, like, just read the list of ingredients. And, like, if it makes sense to you, then it's, yeah. it should make sense for the dogs. I agree. Like, you basically understand everything that's in here. And a lot of things are organic in here. Yeah. So do a lot of your clients eat this? A raw is very popular. Mm -hmm. It may be the most popular at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Raw has so many uh, wonderful attributes to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, because the produce mm -hmm. and the meats aren't processed, yeah. you get the full nutrient nutritional mm -hmm. benefits yeah. of everything in it. And so personally, what makes sense to me for this is it's just because dogs derive from wolves, and I just feel like that's what they would eat naturally. True. It's just a biologically appropriate food, according to me, and yeah. that's why we are such strong believers of, of raw, but I, I know that it's not an option for everyone, and of course, when we travel, sometimes they don't eat like this top-notch food all the time, so it's it's not for everybody. Right. And like when you do road trips, when you like your dog is getting babysat, you don't want to give them like 10 bags of this to like the, the dog sitter. That's just right. not reasonable. So right. it really depends on lifestyle and what you can do.
Right. And it's good to have choices too. Of course. Because if you're raw feeding mm -hmm. um, and you take your dog to a kennel or um, a babysitter sometimes, then they you could go for something like this. Then, exactly. Yes. That's a perfect transition. Can you tell us what's the difference between a raw and a freeze dried raw? Sure. Okay. So, freeze dried raw actually is raw. Okay. Um, it is just the freeze drying process is a gentle process mm -hmm. that just takes the bacteria, it's almost like a pressure. I, was, I explain it like cold pressed. Mm -hmm. It takes um, the bacteria out. Um, and all the moisture. And all the moisture out, mm -hmm. so definitely do rehydrate okay. if, you're, oh, really? if you're using a freeze dry, yes. Because oh. the moisture so is crucial. Yeah. And okay, dogs so will eat it dry, Yes. but I always say, it, even just water or bone broth or goat milk or any of that. I love that. But just mm. water, you know, just get let it soak for a minute, mm. break it up in there, so then they're still eating their their moisture. When it's baked like that, do you lose nutrition though? You have to lose something, right? Compared to the real raw? That's kind of the debate mm. that, okay. you know, a lot of, you know, dedicated raw mm -hmm. people say mm -hmm. we don't want it processed. Mm -hmm. You know, and the like raw patties all. that we've yeah. had, mm -hmm. they're not processed. Yeah. There's no processing whatsoever, mm -hmm. no pasteurization. So everything is as fresh as, you know, the moment it was picked or, yeah. you know. Yeah. So basically raw is the freshest. And then you have, what would you say is fresher between the lightly cooked and the freeze dried? They're both processed in a kind of a gentle fashion. Mm -hmm. the, um, this one is considered raw, whereas the lightly cooked is not. Oh, okay. So there's a difference there. Do you know if in the freeze dried, um, it's done at a certain temperature, or it's just like an extraction process? Um, I don't exactly know mm -hmm. the temperature, and I mm -hmm. feel like there's different brands kind of freeze dry in different yeah. ways. I know that the brands that I carry, they have a gently freeze drying process, Okay, you know. Um, so, But it's not heated. That's why it's oh, considered there raw. there you go. Yes, oh, not, freeze dry. Yes. <laughs> it's cold and it's so fast <laughs> and then just zaps, kind gotcha. of zaps the, um, okay, the product. So that's why it's considered raw. Right. My dog loves this too. Oh. My dog go. loves it. I think I remember you saying your dog is very picky. She's the pickiest, yes. So, yes. so for, for people like you, it must make it harder even to feed them like good food because you have to switch it up all the time. Yes, okay. yep. She doesn't want the same thing every day. So, uh -huh. but she, we will rotate, okay. you know, turkey one day, mm -hmm. beef the next day, okay. freeze dried one day, lightly cooked the next day. Um, mm -hmm. She loves actually these like what wet food pouches and stuff too mixed in. This is just a soft wet food pouch. It's almost like a It's almost a like a gravy. Wow, this is, this looks very fancy. I think you can put this on the you could. freeze dried too. You could put it on or just on its own. It's a complete diet. Oh, really? Yep. That's crazy. Uh, so what else can you use to rehydrate this freeze dried food? You can do just water. Mm -hmm. Works just fine. You can do something like a bone broth. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do goat milk. And what's the advantage of uh, bone broth and goat milk? Bone broth has a lot of nutrients in mm -hmm. it. When you think about, you know, as humans, mm -hmm. we make like a bone, yeah. literally a bone broth mm -hmm. soup because mm -hmm. it has collagen in it. Yeah. It's good for our bones. Yeah. Um, it has so many vitamins and minerals and nutrients in it. It's just kind of a superfood. Goat milk is is awesome too mm -hmm. because it is raw goat milk. Okay. So it has probiotics and enzymes in it. Mm -hmm. It's super great for digestion. Okay. Um, it has proteins in it from the milk. It's easy to digest as mm -hmm. opposed to milk, uh, cow milk. Yeah. It's very hard on digestion. Mm -hmm. And this product also has turmeric and ginger and cinnamon in oh, it. Oh, that's why there's a little orange tip yes. in the bottom. Okay. Which surprisingly my dog and cats love. Really? And the turmeric is great. The cinnamon's great for yes. anti-inflammation. Yeah, yeah. anti-inflammatory. Turmeric is also very good, if I remember correctly, for their joints. Because okay. we discovered recently that Herc and Milton, they have luxating patellas oh. genetically. So we've been feeding them a lot of supplements and like green lip muscle right. and like turmeric and just these little things are really good for them. All right, so uh, let's talk now about traditional kibble. Okay, we have here an example of this kibble. It's from Pet Wands. Mm -hmm. It's uh, locally made. Uh, oh, you deliver free also? Yes, I deliver <laughs> free. This, this business owner here, she will drive up to your house and deliver this if you're in the Lake Forest area. Yes, I will. <laughs> I will, I will. Absolutely. So this is made fresh also. And yep. um, 
let's just talk about the difference between let's say this and commercially available food at the supermarket okay perfect yes, yes. and like we talked about a little bit mm -hmm. we touched on it is this is cooked in small batches mm -hmm. it's cooked at much lower temperatures mm -hmm. So the nutrients are protected a lot more, they're nurtured a lot more, it's a lot more nutrient dense. Yep. Um, our food is sold by the pound, so that, okay. as you see here, the packaging is very different than what you would find. How heavy is this one? This is five pounds. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and we, we even have like refillable storage containers to kind of save on single use plastic and, oh, you know, help good. the environment, keep it fresher longer. Good. Um, so it's sold by the pound. Mm -hmm. Literally, I bag it to order, oh. deliver it to order. <laughs> <laughs> love that. So I love that very you different than uh, commercial. Okay, kibble. good. In, and there would be a difference too between the ingredients, right? Yes. Like I was reading the ingredients of uh, of your food, and the list of ingredients is pretty limited compared to like the other commercially available foods. And what I noticed is that those foods sometimes the first ingredient is going to be like some sort of corn or some sort of carb. Yes, and that's not good because your dogs they they need predominantly meat. Right. Right. Absolutely. And so I, I think these foods like the first ingredients is always a meat, yeah. a high quality meat. Mm -hmm. um, our food has no corn, it has mm -hmm. no soy, it has no fillers. As you can see, it has no colors. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, dyed. Oh, sometimes or, it's dyed. Yes. Have you ever seen the kibble that's got like red little, like looks like little bones and shapes and Oh, things. I thought those foods were like for cats. Do they make them Dog for food. Yes. <gasps> yes, yes, yes. If Ooh. you, if your dog food is colorful, you might want to think about it mm -hmm. because it's not getting the colors from its ingredients. Of course It's not. getting the colors from an added dye. Now I feel like there's a trend that they're trying to get as healthy as possible. Right. And there's things on their labels that say like healthy and natural and this and that, but always like be careful because those are usually marketing yes. yep. uh, ta tactics, but always look at the ingredients. Yes. Just do your research a bit more of, uh, like regarding the actual food, the actual company, right? And just be informed as to what you're feeding your pet. Totally. That's think about thinking. the ingredients. Think about how they're treated. Yeah. Think about where they're coming from. Yes. Think about the quality and where it's made. Also, where it's made. Like if it's made overseas somewhere. Like think about all the transportation that the food has to go through, all the processing for it to be as fresh as possible for the, like as long as possible. Totally, right. absolutely. So yes. think about and our food too. It does. It actually has turmeric in it for mm. anti-inflammatory benefits. Mm -hmm. It has, there's blueberries and cranberries there for the go. superfood, mm -hmm. antioxidants. Mm -hmm. It has probiotics in it Good. for to help with digestion. Mm -hmm. So everything is very thought out. Mm -hmm. Every ingredient has a purpose and a reason for being there. Yeah. No fillers, nothing just, no corn or anything just That's to... Good cheap ingredients mm -hmm. that have no benefit to your yeah. dog or have those are just empty benefit. calories exactly mm -hmm. so yes just read labels make sure you're getting a quality product uh, make sure you're trusting where it's coming from yep. and if your pet likes it yeah yeah exactly so all those criteria yes well it's hard to say because the pets okay I, my first dog i didn't know better yeah and i used to feed her commercial food for the first few months and she loved it mm -hmm. yeah it turns out because it's just super like crappy food. It's like super. It's like, like junk it's, food. Junk food. And Everybody loves McDonald's, sugar, but it's not right. good for you. So, so sometimes I think your your pup is is difficult too. So sometimes it's hard. Like what they like to eat is not always like the healthiest thing. Right. But just like, you know, those are criteria that you have to look out for. Yeah. yeah. And you can always find something. Yeah. That, that's healthy that your pet will like. I mm -hmm. promise you that. I have people come in every day with difficult pups. Oh. And we find something. Oh, there you go. We do. So you're like a problem solver There's too. There's a way. There's something healthy that Perfect. your dog will like and will eat. I promise you. Like this, for example, I'm sure a lot of dogs will like this. They love it. This is canned. Uh, it's a pate. Oh, it's a pate. It's mm -hmm. not like a stew. That one's not. Okay. I this think one is like a stew. Okay, so I think there's a, this bread too, or we've tried something before that's like a, a stew, basically. It yeah. looks like a homemade stew. Right. And I think they would love this. It's basically this. like if you cook something at home and you yeah. put it all together, right? Right, exactly. So and this, wh why would certain dogs prefer, or, or why would certain owners go for this? Versus convenient. Like okay. And maybe just dog, their dog likes it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, canned food is super convenient. You could have it, you know. Just buy a whole bunch. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about defrosting it. You yeah. don't need to have freezer space for it. There's definitely levels of quality when it comes to canned food. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
course. This brand. And I why do love, you like this brand? I love this because it is the first that had no synthetic vitamins or minerals. Okay. So like we were talking about, um, like with small batch, mm -hmm. you look at the ingredients and all the vitamins and minerals that are making that food a complete diet are coming from the ingredients yes. not being added in. Yes. And this is very rare mm -hmm. for a canned food. Okay brand mm -hmm. to not have synthetics so I mm -hmm. love that about it okay. and again you could just read the ingredients and you know it's you just understand healthy everything. whole foods all right so uh, I think we did a pretty good roundup of everything that's available that's more healthy and that's more natural for your pets yeah so thanks Shannon you're for, welcome for thank you so much channel. for having me uh, if you like this kind of video we can do a lot more whenever we come back to the OC and uh, we can touch on specific brands of food if you want this yeah. so if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and of course this is Shannon again from Pet Wants OC South thank you guys for watching thank you for having me we'll see you soon Bye. guys Bye.